Hey everybody, it is CJ. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm not bringing you Dune Imperium content. I'm actually going to be doing something a little bit different. Today, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 games of 2023. That is the games that I've played that I enjoyed the most. I'm ranking them from 10 to 1 for your amusement. Keep in mind, I haven't played every game this year. There are tons and tons of games, thousands of games that come out this year and I've only played a small fraction of those. The number 10 game, my top 10 games of the year, is Trailblazer the John Muir Trail. Now this came out this year and it is uh, published by uh, Mariposa Games and designed by Dan R. Rice III. This is a game where you are, it's a worker placement game. You have these little tokens, which are your boots and you're placing them out on the board and taking actions. Now the, the big, there's, there's some set collection, you're collecting cards and stuff like that, but the main interesting mechanism that, that I think uh, I like, and this is going to be, I think, a running theme in this list and, and in most of my games, I like this. There's an, a mechanism where if you don't complete the John Muir Trail and you don't get to the end, you can't win. <laughs> I really like that idea that you're, you're, there's an urgency to you completing this trail. And so you're, you're, you're hiking along, you're, you have to spend resources in order to get further along. At one point, you get to the... Um, the Great Sierra Lodge, I think I'm saying that right. And then you have like, you kind of like can take um, extra resources from this place. And once you got there, you can, you know, you can keep taking resources from the place, but you have to get there first. So it feels a little bit like a little struggle at the beginning. You get over this hump and then you keep going and then you kind of build this, this uh, set collection engine. Really fun game. Uh, I think it was an underappreciated game. The, the art by and Andrew Bosley, I believe, is really gorgeous. And it's just a nice production. There are some things I wish there were like minis for the, the boots, but you know, it's, it is what it is. It's a great game. It's really fun. And I, I like it at, at all player counts. Actually, it plays pretty quick. It's about an hour, 20 minutes, hour and a half. Um, two players, I think you can get it done in like 60 minutes pretty easily. So in any case, that is my number 10, Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. Number nine, my number nine game of 2023 is one I just picked up. I played it twice, once at two player count and three player count. So this is more of a first impressions of this game really, but it's really quick, quickly shooting up my list of things I like to play. It's really been a, a, a great joy of a game. And that is Revive. Revive actually came out last year in uh, Europe and elsewhere, but it only got to the States in January of 2023. So I'm counting this as a 2023 release. Uh, this is a game by uh, Aporta Games and Helga Meissner, Christian Amundsen, uh, Ospi, and Elif Svensson, and Anna Wermlund, Wermlund are the designers, and I apologize, apologize if I did not pronounce your names correctly, but I think this is a wonderful game. Uh, there's some really interesting things here. You've got this big engine, and you're running up these tracks on the engine and unlocking slots, which are like your, your machinery, your technology, and you're collecting this technology and you can use this elect, uh, energy to activate those on your turns. But what you're really doing in your turns, you're taking a set of four actions, two, two actions, uh, and there's four actions you can take on your turn. Uh, or you're taking a basically a pass action where you're, you're hibernating and you're picking up your cards, you're, you're doing a little bit of deck building, and you're resetting for the next round. But your round's kind of like constantly going. It's not like everyone's waiting for you to pass. It's more like in Everdell where you pass and everyone else could be doing something else. You, they can still be going. So in this, that feels a little bit like that, and you can keep going and keep going, keep going. Then you, then you do this kind of like hibernate action, pick, you know, and reset. But everyone else can do it at their own pace. So it feels very intuitive and quick. It has a central board where you're discovering uh, territories, uh, territories on this board, and trying to build houses and settle your people and population and areas. Uh, very fascinating game. Really fun. It's a little bit solitaire on the side and a little bit combo-y so you feel like you can go and then I do this 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 that feels really good but uh the central board there's an interesting tension because you're always blocking people when you place houses down and while you're not blocking people when it, where you place your population they have to pay you the resources that they use the, the well, one book or one of the resources it's really great I like it highly recommend I uh, revive Number eight is, this is a remake. There's a lot of these games on this list are gonna be remakes actually. This has been the year for remakes. A remake of a classic Reiner Knizia game that came out in 2023, originally released in 1999. Uh, this is published by 25th Century Games and it is raw. 
Ra is the, in my opinion, best bidding game out there. I think it is the most innovative, most interesting bidding game I've ever played. It is a set collection game where you are bidding for tiles. And if you win the bid, you to you turn in your bidding number instead of like a set number of currency. You have like these three tokens that have a number on them. That's the amount of value your bid's worth. And it's a once around the table bid. And when you bid and you win a bid, you take another one of those tiles, those number tiles from the center of the table. And it starts with like the worst one, like a one or something like that. And then, so that becomes your next number for the following round. You play three rounds or epics, I think, or ages or something like that. I don't know the terminology. It's something like that. And uh, and so you're doing that. And you keep bidding until the boat that is like the timer for an, an age or an epic uh, gets to the end. At that point, all bids stop. We, you know, you do a little bit of interim scoring and then you reset for the next round. And now you've got new set of tiles because as you bid and win bids, you're changing your bid for the next round, your, your bid power. Fascinating game. Um, one of the, my favorite things about it is you can evoke a, an, an auction at any time on your turn instead of drawing a tile out of a bag. Basically what you're doing is you're either drawing a tile out of the bag, you are uh, uh, invoking a raw action, which is starting a bid, uh, or you are taking a, a god action, which is a, a single tile that lets you swap things from the, um, the current offering. Those are your actions, very simple. But within that, there are so many decision points to make. So decision points. One of which is, do I start an auction now before this, this offering gets out of control and force people to spend their high cost value tokens to get it? Those things are really fun. You can try to run people out of tokens and then you can just like keep drawing tiles out of the bag until you're done and then you can just take them all. There's so many fun things you can do in this game. I love it. I love, love, love it. Raw is one of my favorite games of all time. It is my number eight for this list, my top games of 2023, mainly because I played it a bunch of times and I just, I, I didn't feel, feel uh, like I should put it too high on the list, but number eight. Number seven is a game that I love. It is one of the most interesting uh, Euros. Is this even a Euro game? I don't even know what it is, really. It's a very strange economic game where you are selling cars, building up a big automotive factory, and you're trying to puzzle that out, and, and you're trying to sell cars using these tiny, these, these weird plastic windows. This game is Horseless Carriage, released by Splatter. Splatter spelling Euron and Yoris uh, are just amazing designers, and they did a great job with this game. Uh, a couple things about what this game is. It's a very solitary puzzle where you're basically building out your, your factory floor. There's a bunch of rules you have to abide by, which makes it the hard kind of thinky puzzle that you'd expect from a Splatter game. But there are, there's no money. You're not spending money to take like, you know, a new uh, car design or a different part of your factory. You have infinite money, essentially. You just have limited space. And so space in this game becomes your currency. And that is, I think, a brilliant mechanism. It's, it's very interesting. So an interesting way to invert the kind of capitalist structure of selling things and re-envisioning it as... A game in which we have infinite money but only space is the problem i love it i think that's both a nice commentary on you know economics factories things like that whatever you want but it's just a lot of fun to play you can really screw people over in this game by buying up the cars they want and uh it's really really fun to do that when you sell cars, the money you get is your points. So there really is no money in this game. It's just points. Uh, and that's it. There's, it's fairly procedural. There's a lot to it. It goes a little bit, I'd say a little long for what it is, maybe like two and a half hours. So it can be a little long. And it teaches a little bit much because of the technologies you need to get. You need to get special technologies before you can take things from the offering um, or the, the, the stock of tiles. So there's a lot to think about. But the planning is really satisfying. I really like it. Horseless carriage. 
Number six, a game that surprised me. I picked this up on a whim while I was at a toy store locally, and I heard a couple of good things about it. It is one of Devere's small box games. They've been putting out these amazing small box games. They did the Red Cathedral, which is phenomenal, really great game. And they put this one out and a couple others. I'll, I'll talk about another one in a second. This is Three Ring Circus. Three Ring Circus released this year and uh, designed by Remo Canzadori and Fabio Lopiano. Fabio Lopiano has done some really amazing games. Merv was a game I really enjoyed. It was a game that um, it didn't stay in my collection. It was one I was really hard to, to, to play, to get to play. But I really enjoyed my plays of it. I had like five or six plays of it. Really enjoyed that, um, but found a better home for it. But Three Ring Circus is interesting. It's a game, it's a medium weight Euro with an area control element where you are circus performers. You're basically a circus, each of you. And you're moving around this, this map of the Eastern and Central, the Eastern and Midwest United States. And you're, you're, performing, uh, you're performing shows at different cities and towns and things like that. And you're, when you perform at a small town, you're placing out your little tents, your, your, your big tops out on the board and that's like gone you can't no one can ever perform there again um and you're also building out this tableau of cards this array of three different horizontal rows of performers and those performers you use in each of your shows so you choose to use one of the rows at a particular performance in a middle or or medium city or a big city and that determines how much points you get or what rewards you get Really interesting thing going on there. But the game is very simple. You either basically perform, you move and perform, or you play a card to your tableau. And uh, and that's really fascinating. I mean, it's really simple, but the way the game works, the way everything comes together is really satisfying. And I like games where there's tension on the board, where you have to watch the board. You have to determine if you want to get in somebody else's way or try to get there before them, or do you want to start building up because nothing stops you from just playing cards as long as you can afford them. That's really great. I, I like it. So Three Ring Circus, a very fascinating, very fun game. Uh, highly recommended. And I think it's it's only 40 bucks. I love these small box games. All right, number five. Number five. Oh, this one I really, really liked. I don't play cooperative games very much. I don't. I don't know what it is. I, I like Gloomhaven. Uh, I like Spirit Island. And now I think I like this this is Unmatched Tales to Amaze by Restoration Games. Uh, the designers are Jason Hager and Darren Reckner. This game is an extension of the Unmatched universe, which I have everything for. Um, and just a minute. I mean, how can you say no to a giant T-Rex, right? So Unmatched Tales to Amaze takes the core mechanisms of Unmatched, that is a kind of card battler duel game, and makes it cooperative against a big bad. And you have a couple of smaller bads that you're also fighting against, right? This game is really great. It, it does a lot of things I like a lot. And it takes some things from my favorite game. So it takes some things from Gloomhaven, the ordering of cards that are the way things come out to determine who does what in what order is very interesting. Um, you have this deck of cards where there's like a player one, player two, whoever, and then the bad guys also have cards in there too. And you're going to shuffle those each round or whatever you call it. And you flip them over and that's who acts. And so you might act early or you might act, act later depending on how that goes. But uh, your, your strategy is going to be dictated by who does what in what order. It's not one of those games you go like, we can take actions in whatever order we want. I kind of get sick of those because then you obviously have to min-max the most efficient thing to do. In this case, you're like, oh, crap. You know, Diana's going to go first this round. Uh, well, in that case, you probably should run away. <laughs> like, things aren't going to work out that way. But it feels very fresh. And the way that the danger levels progress in this game are really well done. Um so I, I, it takes two things I really like. It takes the, my, my, one of my favorite head-to-head -head battlers, turns it into a co-op game that I didn't think I was going to enjoy, and makes it really satisfying. So anyway, if you are interested in that, if you have played Unmatched or really like that system, I think you're going to really enjoy Tales to Amaze. It has four great characters, 
Um, I'm trying to remember them as like Annie Christmas, who's a um, like legendary folk hero uh, from the uh, South. She's a steamboat captain who basically um, uh, steamboat runner who basically like didn't take no crap from no man. I love it. She's great. Um, and she has like a ring of pearls that like, you know, for every, for every man she bests, she puts a pearl on there. It's pretty sweet. It's good lore. Um, there's also Nikola Tesla, who is actually a real person, but in this case, uh, is a guy toting two Tesla coils on his back and like a gun. <laughs> it's very strange. Then there's a couple other people I can't remember. I uh, apologize. Uh, but I'll put them up on the screen, the names of those people here. And so if you like Unmatched, you'll like Tales to Amaze. It's a great addition. And I think it goes about 60 bucks, 55 bucks. Number four. Number four is rising up on my list. It is a game that if I'd had more plays with it, it'd probably be at my number one. That game is another remake by the good Dr. Rhino Knizia. It is a 2023 release, but... It is that remake of a 1978 classic, Quo Vadis, or Where Are You Going, is a game about the Roman Senate and trying to become like the head of the Senate or something like that. This one, Zoo Vadis, is about animals running the zoo and trying to become the star mascot of that zoo. Zoo Vadis is... <laughs> It's hilarious. It's one of the most enjoyable gaming experiences I've had in a long time. I love negotiation games. I really love negotiation games because they allow players to come out of their shell and do things they wouldn't otherwise do. This game allows players to simply trade anything. They can basically trade anything. You're a special you're an animal with a special power, but you can't use that power. You can sell it and you can negotiate different kinds of things with people like, you know, hey, if you really want to, I can give you my power. You can do that if you pay me some right now. You, right now, you can pay me and I will do that next turn. You don't have to stick to that plan. You can totally like renege on that plan, but you might cause some enemies in the process. This game is so much fun. It it causes friction, but it has a lot of drama and it's short. It's about an hour. I'd say it's, I played it at four players and it's just an hour long and then the people we played with really enjoyed it. It was quick and over and then they're like, oh, let's play it again. So Zuvatis, one of the best games I played this year and it's quickly ascending my top games of all time. Uh, I would say if you've played something like Sidereal Confluence, which I also have, but I can't get to the table very much because it's a bit of a teach. It's not that bad. It's a little bit much for some people. This is like a dumbed down, simpler, more streamlined version of, of that. All right, my number three of my top 10 games of 2023. Now this one was actually has been released in Germany prior to this. It's only now this year been released in the United States. It is a game designed by Carlo A. Rossi and published by Ares Games. It is The Rich and the Good or also known as Haben Gut in German. Now, this game is a pure stock manipulation game. There is a small, thin board you put in front of everybody on the table, and there are six commodities. And these commodities will be moving up and down the track, um, basically when they, you know, improve in, in, in value or decrease in value. Now, the way this works is really quite ingenious. You're going to have a turn to buy stocks, and then everyone around the table will have that same turn. And then you'll have a turn to manipulate the stock market. And you do this by a um, eight cards that are on your left and on your right. Now, you're sharing your cards with the person to your left. And uh, that, that card, the, the cards on the left are shared with that person, and the cards on the right are shared with the person to your right. So they know some of what you know. They know half of what you know, and everyone around the table knows half of what someone else knows. It's a fascinating mechanism because they can see if, for instance, salt is going to just plummet in price and sell off their salt right away, which sometimes is really hilarious, triggers like everyone else to start selling off their commodities, knowing what someone else is doing. And you can kind of use this to your advantage in the game strategically 
uh, if you have played with the same group and they kind of get used to you doing things like, you know, just buying and selling very um, carefully, you can trick people into selling off their stocks early. You can um, manipulate things so that, you know, stocks you don't care about will drop. The stocks you do care about will go up, things like that. Um, and you're going to be choosing when you manipulate stocks, you're gonna be choosing one card from this array on your left. You're gonna choose another one from the right. So one from one side and one from the other side. One card needs to be used for its full value and one for its half value. So for instance, they go uh, plus two, plus four, plus six, and then minus two, minus four, minus six. And so if you do half of a, a negative six, it's only minus three, no problem. So this game has a very simple premise. You're, you're going around the, the table and doing these actions, but there's a catch. And this kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, of the Trailblazer game I mentioned, number 10, in that you can't win the game if a particular condition isn't met. In this case, you can't win the game if you don't donate if you donate the least, excuse me, to charity. So while you're being the, you're trying to get the richest and have the most money at the end of the game, you actually can't win the game if you have not donated enough money to charity. On your turn when you buy stocks, you can choose one of the stocks from your hand and you can donate it to charity by putting it face down on your donation board. And then um, at the end of four turns, everyone's gonna do this, you know, buying and then, or selling and manipulation four times. Then we're gonna reveal the cards on our uh, donation board and add up the value of the, that stock and that money goes to charity. It's really interesting. And then we're gonna do it one more time. So there's like two rounds to basically do this twice. And if you don't donate the most, you're kind of like looking around the table going like, okay, what is, what is going on over here? This person's got $300 donated. I just need to not be like the last person that's the less the lowest so i can be like 325 whatever it's fine as long as i'm not the last person and you're kind of like kind of jockeying for position there you don't have to donate this is a really interesting thing you can not donate it's actually better for you to not donate because then you that money's yours and at the end of the game any stocks that you have in your hand get cashed out but um the interesting thing about this game is how player actions player behavior around the table shapes how other players will react it's a fascinating game it's really quick it's about 45 minutes maybe an hour if you're playing with like five people not that long 45 minute game um fantastic fantastic game fantastic production they've got these nice wooden um holders for the cards that are pretty well weighted and yeah just it's a great great game highly recommend it that is the rich and the good all right, we're coming down to our top two games of 2023. That is my top two games of 2023. And this one's probably going to be no surprise to you guys if you watch the channel, if you know uh, anything about our, our channel on Hidden Assets. This is going to be Dune Imperium Uprising. Now, Dune Imperium Uprising is my number two game of the year. Um, and this is designed by Paul Denon, of course, and published by Direwolf Digital. It is a phenomenal game. It really is. There are so many fun things about Dune Imperium Uprising. It's a deep game. There are, um, the Imperium deck is phenomenal. Go check out our review uh, on the podcast on, on Spy Satellites to get a much deeper um, insight into what I'm thinking about when I, when, I, uh, when I think about Dune Imperium Uprising. Really like it. Um, there are a couple things that hold it back for me, and that's why it's number two. All right my number one game of 2023 now this is a little bit of a cop-out because i love this game before this edition came out this game has been in publication since 1963 it was designed by sid saxon the late great sid saxon one of the greatest designers in board gaming history um, and he uh, made this amazing stocks game uh, and this game is acquire now, Acquire is a stocks manipulation game where you are placing out these tiles to make different chains of hotels bigger, that increasing their value, essentially. And when you do that, you're increasing the value of, that, of stocks in that company. And your goal is obviously to have the most money at the end of the game. But the trick of that is you're, you, know, you need to make money as you go because there's no other way to make money. The way you make money is by buying stocks in smaller companies smaller hotels and then having them merged get acquired by bigger companies and 
the way you manipulate the board, the way you plan to buy stocks is so satisfying. Uh, I mean, I love stocks games this is one of the reasons this is number one. And I don't think that Paul Denon and crew would be very sad to lose out to one of the greatest designs of all. I think it's one of the greatest designs of all time. I think it's just a phenomenal game. It's a game that I get, get my family to play. And then they said after the last game, when I crushed them, they're like, never again am i playing this game again <laughs> it was it was a little bit um a little bit much for them but this is one of my favorite games of all time uh it is such a great production the plastic uh pieces that you put on the board fit perfectly um the cards are nice they give you paper money which i hate but i use iron clay so it doesn't matter to me um and the you know the only thing i'd say as a knock against this game is the green and the blue and the purple shades are a little bit close but once you kind of get used to it it's not so bad um i wish that that was a little bit changed but generally speaking i think this is just one of the best productions of acquire they've ever had it might be the best production of acquire ever and this is one of the best stocks games intro level stocks games that uh i've ever seen so oh Big fan, huge, huge fan of Acquire. Check it out um, if you if you it has it has kind of like an old school by the way old school feel where the last couple of turns as you're trying to end the game because it's player driven can feel a little bit long if you're not used to that and so you have to be aware as you're going into it it's going to be really exciting at the beginning you might might have a couple of like things going on some merges and then it gets the companies get bigger and bigger and bigger and once they get past an 11 size they cannot be merged into other companies anymore and so they just stay there and so you're you're trying to figure out where to place things in order to either make more companies to then merge them or not so it has a little bit of an old school like burnout in the last couple of turns but if you can get past that Mm, what a good game what a good game all right those are my top 10 games of 2023 but i have a couple of things to throw in here to just sweeten the pot so i've got a couple of categories i want to talk about best expansions that i played this year now obviously i haven't played a ton of expansions this year i, I generally don't go for expansions unless they are like four games that i just absolutely love but two games had great expansions that i wanted to mention the first one is for my number two game of all time of all time and that is dune the big dune game by gale force 9 uh or avalon hill if you have the avalon hill version of the same game more or less um uh, the, the gale force 9 version is a lot streamlined this ikaz and moritani house expansion is maybe my favorite of all their expansions now, their very first expansion that had Ix and Tylaxu was phenomenal as well because it added a ton of cards. So it added a bunch of like busted cards that make the game a little bit too, a little bit too uh, feel bad sometimes. We just take those out. This game, this expansion for this game, adds House Ikaz, House Mortani, and both of these factions are fantastic. I'd say the Mortani is my, one of my new favorites. They feel like the Harkonnens, but just somehow more evil if that's possible. They're great. Uh, ECAS feels really dynamic and, and weird and very hard to play, but I love the puzzle of playing them. I think they're they're closely, they're, they might be some of my favorites to play too. Um, this game has the Homeworlds expansions in it. Uh, I would show you, but this is like my whole set as a bunch of stuff spread out throughout the whole boxes. But the Homeworlds expansion means that you can put your, you, you start with a, a disc, which is like your planet, and all of your reserves start there, and then you can as you deploy those troops, when it gets down to a threshold, you flip that over, and that indicates that you now have either a penalty or bonus, depending on your faction. And people can invade your home world and take control of it and extort you for money, extort you for spice, basically. So that, that's really fun. Um, it has uh, some new uh, spice cards that have like strongholds. Like they're called, I don't think they're called strongholds. I can't remember what they're called. Um, they're called uh discovery tokens that's what they're called discovery tokens i apologize um i haven't played with them yet but they look really fun what they basically do is when you flip over a, a card for a spice blow it may or may not put a new token on the board um that is on the outcropping the rock croppings outcroppings the rock spaces basically and what they do is they are special locations that you can go to and discover and when you do 
uh, they might give you something really cool. Like they might give you extra spice generation or they might give you a one-time effect or it might do, be a new stronghold. You never know. Um, so those are really cool. And I really like that one. I, I haven't played that yet, but I want to. Uh, the other mechanism that it adds uh, that I think is just an always add to my games when I'm playing now, and I played with these before, and I think that they're great, are the Nexus cards. So in Dune, when you when you ally with somebody, you get their bonus like ally effect. But if you don't ally, you decide to stay by yourself, there's not really a bonus for doing that in the base game. But with this, you now have the Nexus of cards. The Nexus cards give you the bonus of specific things. So like um, you'll draw a card and it'll say like, you know, Emperor an emperor faction bonus and if the emperor is in the game uh you can do something to the emperor just really devious stuff usually like cancels their effect it's like almost like having uh, another uh, miracle card another karama card anyway you don't need to know that but those that, that's really fun those are great so it's nice to reward people for wanting to stay as a solo team and since i've been playing this game um a lot more people have been wanting to join and so we've been adding people up to seven and eight people so it's it's been better to have the nexus cards for that so really really happy about that nexus cards so that's one of my favorite expansions from 2023 uh, my next expansion is to a game that i quite like uh, i think it was a um, maybe an eight out of ten maybe a 7.5 out of ten without the expansion i think it's an 8.5 maybe maybe even a little higher 8.5 i think is pretty good and that is furnace and so the expansion is actually not, didn't come out this year. It came out last year, though I didn't get it till this year. Furnace Interbellum. Now, Furnace Interbellum adds a couple of really cool things. It adds a fifth player, which I think is great. Having more players in this game makes it more fun. I just think that that's the way it works. Basically, this is an engine builder game where you are bidding for cards and then you're running your engine kind of like in Wingspan, if you ever played that, a little bit like that. And you're just trying to make resources into points. That's it. Um, so pretty straightforward. The um, expansion adds capital discs that are like, you can dial them. You, you can, you know, dial them from one to like some high amount and then bid that amount of coal for things. Um, it adds uh, manager tokens and business school cards. The business school cards, the manager tokens, those are really cool. Basically, they just give you ways to modify your existing cards. If you bid for them and you get win them, then you can keep reusing them on cards each round. Really cool. It basically gives you a reusable card that you can modulate between whatever card you want. Um, and it adds a couple of new agents or player abilities um, for, for you. So it gives you in a couple of revised one. One of them's revised from the base game, which I think was nice. It was important because that, that leader or that agent or whatever was kind of busted. Um, so yeah, really good expansion. I like it. It's about 25 bucks or something like that. If you really like Furnace, I think this is a must buy, um, great expansion. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, my notable games that came out prior to 2023 that deserve your attention, but that I didn't play until this year. <laughs> so these are games that had I played last year and had I made this list, these would be in my top 10 for sure. Um, a couple of them are not in last year, but most of them were last year. Okay, the first one I want to mention is Scout. So Scout is a big, big hit in the trick-taking, hand-shedding world. If you really like trick-takers, you like hand-shedders, this is a great game. Um, it does play, it says plays in about 30 minutes, but I think it plays in about an hour. If you play four players, this is going to take about an hour. What this is, is a game where you have a hand of cards. I, I don't have my copy here. My copy is actually um, not at home right now, but I will get it back. Uh, it is an, uh, published by Oink Games and uh, designed by uh, Kai Kajino. And this game is, you, you get dealt a hand of cards, and they have numbers at the top and the bottom. And at the beginning of each round, you can decide whether you want to flip those cards over entirely, just flip them over, and have the, top, the other side of the cards, the, the basically the bottom side instead of the top. But you cannot change the order of the cards in your hand. Now, that's a really interesting mechanism because... You're stuck with that. It's a little bit like Bonanza if you played that. Um, and But the thing is that you're, you're basically playing cards, very simple, you're playing cards to beat a higher number of cards or a run of cards or whatever, a set. So, you know, and so you're playing them to, to do that and that gets you some points as you're going along and the first person to go out 
gets no negative points and everyone else takes negative points equal to the number of cards in their hand. And then they, sub they, they subtract negative points for the, the bonus points they got throughout the round. And you just do that four times and then the game is over. But the way that you actually play these is really interesting because you can only play cards that are next to each other in your hand. So if you have a run of three, two, three, four, you can play that as two, three, four. But if it's two, five, four, you can't do that. Or three, five, four, you can't do that. It has to be exactly in your hand right. So you're trying to play these cards in order to push other cards together to make new runs and new sets. It's really fun. Uh, so love this game, Scout. Okay, um, by the way, these are in no particular order. There's not, not a top uh, notable games. This is just some of the games that I really loved and want you to know about. Uh, the next game I want to talk about is called First Rat. Now, First Rat came out in 2022. It's published by Spe Pegasus Spiele, and the designer is Gabriel Asilio, Asilio, excuse me, and Virginia Gili. And uh, First Rat is an interesting, interesting game. The theme of it is what initially drew me to it. It's about rats trying to build spaceships to get to the moon. Whether they make it there, I I don't know but uh, this is a really interesting game where you are basically moving your rats along this track Let's see if i can show you you have this like track you're moving along and your rats have to end on uh the same color space that's the trick and they can move one to three spaces if you move more than one or one to five if you move just one uh the goal of this is to to collect resources to then help fund the spaceship project or to stash cheese away or other things. Um, and the game is very simple, but the puzzle is a lot deeper and more interesting than I was expecting. It is like family weight plus. So I'd say, you know, 12 year olds, 13 year olds, 14 year olds, probably great for this game, but adults are gonna love it too because it just is pretty thinky and there's lots of options, lots of pathways to victory. So big, big fan of First Rat, I think it's great. Um, this is a really smart design, and I think, you know, if you're looking for a Family Weight Plus game to revisit over and over again, this might be it. All right, the next game on my list actually came out in 2020, but this is a republication, a remaking, a re-envisioning of a slightly older design by Vital Lacerda. It's published by Eagle Griffin Games, and it is Kanban EV. Oh, this game's big. All right, so this box is huge. It is beautiful. The production is amazing. You got the Eon O'Toole art on it. Um, I love this game so, so much. I've been playing it in person. I've been playing it online. Uh, this is basically a worker, mo worker placement game. You have one worker, and the way that this game works is you're basically making cars and scoring points. I'm not going to get into it. It's a big high-level overview of of this game, making uh, making cars and scoring points. But the big trick of it is that it's not easy to do that. First of all, you have uh, Sandra, your boss, who is going around and evaluating you in different departments to see who is doing the worst and punishing the person who is doing the worst. So you don't want to do the worst in, in each department that she ends up in. That's the trick. At the same time, you're, you can actually make her skip departments because there's only one space, there's two spaces for each department, but she can uh, not she can only occupy one space so she's like a meeple that kind of moves down this track um and so you're kind of like setting it up so that people will end up with um uh getting punished instead of her instead of you by her so that's that's what kanban is why is this game so good if this was right if this was this year published this would be my probably number one game i think this is it's now in my top 10 games of all time. I think this is such a brilliant design. It's extremely rewarding. It's tight. It feels, um, uh, there's a lot of interaction. You are really thinking about what other people are doing. You're watching their boards. You're watching what they're, what colors of cars they're trying to, to make. There's different types of cars you're trying to make. And in doing so, you really are planning out where you're going so that you can manipulate where they go because they can't stay at the same location. They have to go to a new space. And because there's two there's two slots for each of the like actions, basically, like the top action goes first and the bottom action, you can give somebody the second action and you can take the thing away from them, basically, or you can end up, they can end up with the wrong thing. 
So it's really good, really tight, and very mean. Oh, such a good game. I really love this one. Uh, maybe we'll get this one on the channel here pretty soon because it's just such a fun game to play. Uh, that's Con Bonnie V. Okay, the next game on my notable games list came out in 2013, was published in the US in 2014. It is by Matthias Kramer and Stefan Maltz and Louise Maltz. It is, they released a deluxe version in 2020, but mine is the OG version. I found a an o old version of Rococo um, on sale on my local game stores and I picked it up and I fell in love with this game. This is a game about making dresses for uh, Louis the 14th, is that right? Louis the 15th. And what you're doing is you are taking different actions by using cards in your hand. You have a, a kind of a deck builder thing going on, except for you can look through your deck and choose the three cards you want to use for the next round. So it's a deck builder, but you get to choose the most op op optimal, uh, excuse me, the most optimal cards to use for the next round. Fa fascinating idea, which means you're never really screwed when you're trying to figure out what to do. You just say, oh, I want this, then this. Okay, my next ones are going to be this and this. That's fine. No problem. And you're either making dresses to to give to people who go to Louis XV's big ball. He's putting on this big ball, this celebration. And that basically scores you points. Or you're going to be selling those dresses to the public, essentially, and making some money. Really great game. Uh, the deluxe version is also very beautiful. And I just don't have that one. I just have this one. But I actually really like the aesthetic of this one anyway. Um, and so it's it's quite good. There's nothing really changed from the other version in this version, as far as I'm aware. So yeah, Rococo. Um, I've seen it R-O-C-O-C-O. -O -O. Uh, I have one that's slightly different. I'm not really sure what the difference is and why they're like that. But anyway, this is a phenomenal game from Pegasus Spiele. Um, and the... Uh, the, the new one is published by, I believe, is that Eagle Griffin? I think it's Eagle, also Eagle Griffin. I might be wrong there, but that deluxe version is very cool too. Check it out, Rococo. Okay, another notable game for 2023 that I played this year. I think it came out last year. It did by Pegasus Spiele and Deep Print. The, the designers are Victor Kibilka and Alexander Pfister. It is a remake of Mombasa, and that is Sky Mines. Sky Mines. Now, Sky Mines is basically the same game as Mombasa, but with, with the expansion, um, a couple expansion things and promo things thrown in. But the new way it's put together, it looks very, very good. Um, I'll show you the back here. Uh, the board looks very moony, I guess. It's very generically blue, but I like the way it looks. Um, I've heard people complain about the cards are a little bit difficult to read. A little bit, but not too bad. Um, and I think that, generally speaking, this is a superior version of Mombasa. Um, I think that it has this other side of the board. You can play a completely different game on the other side. You can play a classic version on the other side. It's called the, um, the Asteroid Belt side. I haven't actually played on the Asteroid Belt side. That's something I really want to do. This is one of those games that I quite enjoyed. It's a stock game, in a way where you're going up these tracks to get stocks. Uh, it's like your value of your stock, but then like the value is determined by how big that company is on the board, like how many houses or how many sites they've they've got houses on. They're not really houses, they're, they're whatever, moon base houses. And and so you're, you're kind of doing that, but you're never really selling stock, you're just constantly going up it. So you're trying to figure out how to manipulate that so that yours is the highest at the end of the game. Um, and then you're doing gener generic, you know, great Euro game things. This has a very similar mechanism that um, Alexander Pfister's Blackout Hong Kong has, where you're placing cards down into different slots and then revealing them and then taking actions with them. It's a really great mechanism. It's a hand builder, not a deck builder, but a hand builder. You keep making your hands hand bigger with you when you buy cards. And that's really fun. So I really like this game, Sky Mines. Check it out. It's a blast. Two more games that I want to mention from my notable games list. One of them is Great Western Trail Argentina, which I quite enjoyed. It is a very big version of Great Western Trail, but I think it does a lot of things smarter than Great Western Trail. I'd say that it's like a Great Western Trail 1.5. Um, it has an interesting mechanism where before when you move the train up, you're just getting, 
you're just getting points and putting your station masters out. But in this one, the further out you move on your train, it actually shrinks, it condenses the board um, because you've got these farmers, vaqueros, I think, that are going down on these, these spaces as, as the game progresses. And you can, when you walk over them, you have to deal with them. <laughs> um, or if you move your train far enough, you can just take the train to the end and skip them. So there's a lot of interesting mechanisms going on with this that are, are very smart. I like what Great Western Trail Argentina. I mentioned that I have not played Great Western Trail New Zealand yet, but uh, I'm, I'm interested in doing that as well. But Great Western Trail Argentina, I don't own a copy of this, but it's by Egert Spiel and uh, obviously Alexander Fister's the designer. And uh, check it out. It's really fun. I know a lot of people are saying that New Zealand is a better version and they'd just rather play that. I don't know. Maybe. I, I can't say one way or the other, but... Uh, I like Argentina quite a lot. I think I do like it better than base game Great Western Trail. I think so. Maybe. It, they're very close. I like both of them. The last game on my notable games list that came out in 20 that came out prior to 2023, but now I finally played in 2023. This one I played a bunch. It's been a big hit with my group. It's been a big hit with the group online who played Doom with me. And it might be a big hit with you. This game came out in 2021. is published by Sorry We Are French. And the designer is Kuta Yamada. This is a reprint from a 2015 version. That's Iki. So Iki, a game of Edo artisans. Now in this game, you are, um, well, merchants essentially going around this track. Um, and you go around this track and you get to take actions at the different stalls. It's kind of like a worker placement game, but you are limited in how far you can go. You don't block anybody on the spaces. Um, and you only get 13 actions in the entire game. So the game is over in about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes your first time or two hours in your first time, but it's, it's over pretty quick. And you're hiring workers and you're putting them in these stalls. And they essentially, this is essentially a shared economy board where your workers, your, your merchants, and the people you've hired can be used by other people. And when other people use them, they level up, which is great for you. And when they finally get to the last spot in leveling up, they retire and they go to your game board and they're basically give you, they give you points or, and other valuable things like food or wood or other things you need as a kind of income, which will happen three times during the game. So that's really cool. And they also give you points for having sets. You're kind of collecting sets. Um, and the other thing about this game that I really love, and that's really interesting, it's a unique aspect of it. I don't have anything in this, in, in, in my game collection that's quite like this. Three times during the game, a fire will break out in one of the stalls randomly. You don't know where it is. There's a, there's like four tiles that you randomly do, uh, shuffle up and draw one. And that's where the fire breaks out. And as you're, as you're playing this game, you're constantly worried about how, and where this fire is going to strike because it can take out all of your guys take out all of your workers and even burn down buildings that you have if you are not careful um, it starts on the outside of that kind of like quadrant and then it moves in a little hard to ex explain but it'll come in and like destroy a bunch of stuff unless you have worked on investing time into firefighting and that's also a track that determines who gets to choose first in placing their um, they're like movement worker. You have a, a worker that chooses how far you go, and then you have your worker that moves around the board. So very fascinating. This game has a lot of interesting tension. It's quick. It feels dynamic because every game you don't see every every worker that comes out from the deck. Each there's like a bunch of different decks that come out depending on what season it is, and so the game constantly shows you different stuff. Um, I think I've played this game like six times now, and I've just really enjoyed every single play of it, and it makes me want to keep playing it. That's one of the games that I'm keeping in my collection. I think it's phenomenal, and I think that this is a very smart design. There is an expansion coming out this year. I'm not sure about it. I haven't heard um, like amazing things about it, but I, I am, I'm excited to try it out maybe. Maybe something I will do is is expand my game of Iki. So, Iki. There are some games, notable games, that I haven't played that I've been wanting to. One in particular is on my shelf right there. Hegemony. That's lead your class to victory. I have been aching to play this game. I have a couple of friends who want to play it, but we just haven't been able to get around to 
getting that to the table. It's a big socioeconomic Euro game where you are uh, playing either as the state, the working class, the capitalist class, or the middle class. Each of those classes plays a little bit differently and has different goals, but some of them overlap. In generally, this asymmetric game is trying to get you to um, really dig into the inner workings of a state governing body. And as you are part, the people who kind of make up that body, it's really fascinating how it works. Um, it reminds me from my, what I've seen, it reminds me a little bit how interconnected some of the systems in um, Big Dune are and some of the systems in uh, Pax Pamir second edition is one of my favorite games. Uh, there are a couple others that I've been wanting to play that I haven't. One of those is Vladimir Suhi's Evacuation. Evacuation is a game about migrating your people from a dying earth to a new planet. Really appeals to me. I like that idea. Let's get off this planet. Uh, but really, it, it has a fascinating mechanism where you're, you're taking down, tearing down your engine halfway through the game. You start with your engine built, you tear it down, then you rebuild it to the end of the game. So very fascinating, excited to play that game. Another game I have not played, which probably would be on this list, is Great Western Trail New Zealand. I have Great Western Trail, love it, it's one of my favorite games. Haven't played this new one, but I, I'm excited to. I will get to that. That is by Alexander Pfister. And that is going to do it for me today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I, if you uh, like uh, this video, if you got this far, give us a like and subscribe. If you want to keep watching more Dune Imperium content and other things, we have a Baldur's Gate 3 uh, playthrough that Slipping Sand, Lannister, and I are, are currently going through. Uh, we are going to be doing some more non-Dune content in the future, including some game nights with the, with the people from the Hidden Assets Discord. So, you know, if you are interested in joining us for those things, you can do so. And if you are interested in supporting us, you can do so at patreon.com slash hidden assets. And that's going to do it for me. Have a wonderful evening. Have a happy new year. I'll see you all later.